What I'm going to share with you next are parent reports from five people. Uh, start, and these are valid as of July 24th, 2012. We've got almost a dozen children on the micronutrients at the moment, and every single one of them is seeing positive change. A three-year-old girl diagnosed with CP spastic diplasia has been on it for 14 days. She has gained one pound and is eating more and trying new foods. A 12-year-old girl uh, with, diagnosed with CP dystonic has been on it for 18 days. Per her parents, we have noticed a huge improvement in head control and trunk control, and I mean big improvement. A seven-year-old boy with dystonia has been on it the longest. He's been on it for 35 days. He has thus far gained one pound. For anyone familiar with dystonia, you will know that that is completely unusual. His mother reports for tone and strength. His legs seem to be a bit stronger. When we lift him, he is a quadriplegic. He squeezes our arms with his legs hard enough to bruise them. This didn't happen before. He also seems to all of a sudden have fat deposits on his arms and legs we didn't see before. His legs actually feel thicker. Also, his bib is getting too tight for him, so his neck must be getting thicker too. Further observations. D seems to be standing up in his chair more often than he has in the past. Because D is not paralyzed, he does have use of his arms and legs, although due to very low strength and extreme lack of muscle control, he cannot stand on his own or in a sustained way. He stands by pushing himself up with his legs and not into a full standing position. Still, it takes some leg strength to do it more often. Also, I have witnessed him holding himself a bit longer in a standing position when I stand him on his legs with less support from me. Before, if I tried to stand him up, he just automatically collapsed his legs. He still does that sometimes, but not every time. Be aware that this particular child was a 25-week preemie. Another boy, age 5, with, diagnosed with mild CP, has been on the supplements for 28 days. He has gained 2 pounds. He has still very few words and is using sign language. For tone and strength, he has increased strength and tone in his arms, fingers, neck, and legs, according to his parents. He is walking more, climbing stairs with more willingness and confidence. These are significant changes, per the mother. She also added she's seeing cognitive improvement changes. C is more motivated to use his hands, leave his room before he needed to be directed to do so. Increased in self-awareness and of his surroundings. Conscious decision-making has improved significantly. He is wanting to go outside. He would take my hands and show me the door. I'm going to get emotional. It is so touching to see these significant changes. For energy, she said, I do want to mention that we do a daily sensory processing diet with C, physical therapy, bike riding, hippotherapy, that also helps. But the supplement is causing more significant increases in his energy level. His ability to do these activities has improved. He is more focused, less irritated, and is also less tired now after his physical activities. He's taking naps. Prior to the supplement, he would take a daily nap of two and a half hours, and now it's one hour uh, with the help of activities before naps, and some days no naps. His muscle tone changes in legs, arms, fingers, neck, and calves too, causing the increased strength in his overall body. Another five-year-old boy is report, uh, who's been on the supplement, he had SPD and hypertonia, has been on it for 24 days. He has gained two pounds. His mother reports a huge improvement in his core strength, and he is now going up and down the stairs independently where before he couldn't. Some of what she has to say has to be heard. I took him to the playground and he climbed the rock wall there and several other structures of varying shapes and sizes. He never climbed the playground before on anything other than stairs and then only when holding my hands. He also crossed the mushroom structures. At his friend's birthday party, he climbed a tall ladder into a treehouse. He definitely could not have ever done that before. I climbed it and it was tough. At the same party, he went into a swimming pool about two and a half feet deep and up to his chest with a life vest on without me. This is huge because he's never been able to stand in the water without falling forward or backward due to the buoyancy of the vest. I've always had to hold on to him so he wouldn't flip one way or another. He was in there alone this time and was jumping with the other with kids. Just about one month ago when I had him in the water of the same depth, he couldn't do this and was tipping. Then I took him to pump it up to waste time waiting for a contractor I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a short-lived. Instead, he bounced without holding my hands. Usually, he can't keep his balance in inflatables due to his weak core strength. 
he walked up a, a slanted wedge with just his feet and not holding on to anything. He even went through the inflatable obstacle course, complete with foam rock climbing, and got over it to the slide all by himself. I wasn't even spotting him, and he climbed a slippery dome-like structure in the middle, in the center of the bounce houses. I'm telling you about these children because if you have a child with these issues, you probably understand the significance of what these parents are reporting better than I do. The pattern of improvement that we're seeing is the same as we've seen with the premature babies. Week one to two, there's no real change, a possible increase in dirty diapers. And we wanna warn you, if you decide to do this, watch for an increase in diaper rash as a result. When more goes in, more comes out, and you have to pay attention. By the end of week two, there is usually a noticeable increase in appetite, and it, which kicks off the beginning of a healthy muscular weight gain. After week four, there appears to be an increase in muscle tone, appearing to begin with head, neck, and trunk, followed by arms and hands and legs. With babies, walking began at a standard time, regardless of prematurity, within two to four months of being on the supplements. In two of the cases of the children that we've, I've shared with you, they weren't born prematurely, but their mothers were. And we know from the vet literature that if the mother doesn't have the micronutrients in her system herself, she can't pass them down to her offspring. Now you're probably asking, why isn't a doctor telling me this? Here's the current working theory. I think the doctors got confused as to which came first, the chicken or the egg. In this case, with cerebral palsy in particular, the current theory is that brain damage occurs first and then the neuromuscular problems occur. But what I think is going on is that the micronutrient deficiencies occur first and the symptoms are the muscle problems and maybe even some of the brain damage. So, we're back to the working theory. Correcting the micronutrient deficiency, already identified in the medical textbooks, appears to cause premature babies under one year actual to quickly meet growth and developmental milestones. Furthermore, these deficiencies may actually be the cause of some cerebral palsy types with the associated neuromuscular issues and or brain damage a symptom instead of the precipitating event. More importantly, in these types where there are low stores of trace minerals due to either prematurity, prenatal malnutrition, or maternal low stores, it appears that correcting the deficiency issues results in dramatic improvement, if not complete reversal of symptoms, as well as healthy muscle weight gain and increased strength in cases of hypertonic, hypertonic symptoms. There are also reports of decreased hyperspasticity in one child's hands. If this theory is right, you correct the deficiency and the body should begin healing itself. It might not work for everyone, but right now we don't have any children for whom we aren't seeing improvement. But keep in mind, our sample size is small. This is also early stages, so I don't know how far things are going to keep progressing, so I have to urge cautious optimism. The bad news is that according to a guy with a PhD in clinical nutrition, it may only work for children up to age 12 because of growth plate issues and possible long-term consequences of deficiency. The good news is there are no negative side effects. It's inexpensive and easy to administer as long as you hide the nasty taste in something. From the work on the Preemie Project and my own experience with my own children, the younger they are, the faster the deficiency is corrected, the faster they achieve normal growth and developmental milestones. How to try it yourself. First of all, step one, get some liquid colloidal minerals. There are many different brands out there available over the counter. We use a brand called PDCM72 Plus. It was the brand I used and we're using it, we used it in the project mainly because we were able to get the laboratory assays. However, we have Me Too reports from parents who used other brands. You can pick stuff up off the internet. You can go to the vitamin store, you can go to GNC, you can probably go to your local grocery store. Just make sure it's plant-derived liquid colloidal minerals. It should read like the uh, periodic table. Take a before video of your child, weigh and measure as appropriate, and discuss your concerns on video. Number three, 
warn your child this stuff tastes like dirt because it does. Tastes awful. Some of the other brands have flavoring. I don't have any experience with them. Now, mix it with something. It's something that tastes good, uh, like juice, chocolate, milk, ice cream, anything if necessary, just to mask the taste. If you have to, divide it into two dosages. Number four, do not give it near bedtime. It's gonna give your kid a little burst of energy and keep you up all night. Five, document any changes you see or notice, both with your own notes and your physician as appropriate. Take another video in a month. If there's no changes in two months, discontinue. If you see no changes in two months, I'm gonna ask you politely, please send us the information. I, I hate to tell you this, but even people, it's not helping, that's gonna help us figure out what's going on and who it will benefit. Suggested dosages. The recommended daily dosages are, that we're telling you are different than what's on the bottle. If your baby is under 10 pounds, then you're going to give three milliliters or half a teaspoon once a day. If your child is under five pounds, cut that dosage in half. If your child is between 10 to 15 pounds, give them five milliliters or one teaspoon. And 15 to 20 pounds, 10 milliliters or two teaspoons. A 20 to 60 pound child should be given one tablespoon or 15 milliliters. And if your child is between 60 and 100 pounds, give two tablespoons. Remember, we're trying to correct a deficiency here, which is why we're giving the quantities based on weight and it won't have to be forever, I don't think. How to try, how long should you be doing this? If you see positive results within two months, continue for a minimum of six months. With the preemies babies, that's what we told them. We suggested six months because by that point, the babies were eating real food, and as long as they're eating a healthy diet, everything seems to be fine. At this stage in this investigation, however, I'm gonna stick with the recommendation of six months just because we don't know what else to tell you until we get some more data. Each child is different, and correction is going to depend on the following issues. One, gestational age at birth. Two, weight at birth. Three, the mother's nutritional status before and during pregnancy. Four, length of time they've been deficient, which is a nice way of saying how old they are when you start. Beginning weight and any other outside health issues that have been going on. As I said, if it doesn't help, let us know. If it does, please let us know that as well. All data is helpful at this point. I'm an honest woman. The logic I am sharing with you is sound. The research already exists and other children are seeing benefit. I might be wrong and this might not help your child. The bottom line is this, it can't hurt, it doesn't cost much, and you should know within two months if it's going to help your kid. What do you have to lose? Thank you for taking the time to listen. Good luck and may you be blessed with happy, healthy children.